and welcome to this spoiler video with some redesigned cards. Ah. Exciting. I'm Richard Walker, by the way, just in case you don't know who we are. And my partner here is Rebecca Walker. Partner. Wife. Whiffy. Yeah. Did the deal. Got married. Done all that. But now we need to talk about cards. Yeah, let's, let's talk about some cards. Where'd we get them? <clears throat> well, um, I think it probably best to say this time um that there was a conclave for the game of thrones lcg yeah and the conclave had a, a design department uh, which was tasked with uh, designing new cards and also uh, the head of the design department had a mandate that he wanted to pursue which was redesign some of the most broken cards which I understand to be most of the ones on the restricted list. Yeah. Um, and release those in an update. Okay. So I think that's what the plan was. They obviously spent months trying to work out some redesigns for these broken cards or whatever one that needed redesigns. Because there's been quite a few people working on these, isn't there? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm not entirely sure how many, but... You know, obviously there's been a lot of work involved coming up with ideas, redesigning them, and then playtesting them. And then, of course, as everybody knows recently, uh, the Conclave dissolved into some, you know, into nothing. And there was lots of Facebook disagreements going on. Um, but the head of the design team, Hanno, wants to, you know, release the work that had been done. And it's almost complete. And I can kind of understand that having spent hours and hours and hours and hours dedicating your, yourself a four-month, five-month... Yeah. I mean, you know, Hanno's led the team, but there's still a team of people that have worked really, really hard on these cards. <coughs> and it's always been something that was, you know, pre-planned to do. Um, so it's totally understandable that the design team, um, you know, as a group are excited to release these cards and, you know, see how you guys feel about them and what you think about the redesigns and stuff. Yeah, I mean, we were asked to do these spoilers quite some time before the mm. conclave dissolved, so, yeah. Um, I understand there's some tension between two sides at the moment. There's some tension against Hanno and, you know, there, there's things going on. But, yeah, so we decided to go ahead with the, the videos and if the redesigned cards don't get accepted by the community for whatever reason, it's fine, it's just a video, right? Yeah. It's yeah. just a way to explore what could have been rather than what is going to be. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I quite like the idea as well of like having some new cards and new things to talk about. I think um, the last few months have been a bit stagnant, obviously, for Thrones and, you know, that's... <coughs> Partly with the FFG, but also, you know, while the pandemic has definitely not helped matters. Um, so having something positive to talk about, I think is really good. We saw the cards that had been um, um, put out there by the uh, South Korean group. Yeah. Um, that had done some sort of in the background, didn't know that was all going on. They've got people talking <laughs> again. And and in fact, I think a lot of the, the Facebook drama that's been going on, um, some of it may be because people don't have any certain content to talk about. Mm. And perhaps, you know, new ideas just coming out, encouraging people to talk about new ideas and other things. Yeah. So we're hoping, um, you know, you guys will see the video, um, see the redesigned cards. Um, we'd like to know what you think and how you feel about it. Um, but, you know, we we're hoping that it all instigate some positive conversations definitely yeah positive <laughs> conversations and of course if you like the card great brilliant if you like the video great brilliant if you don't like the cards uh it's all the conclave's fault yeah it's not us honest. it's not us um <laughs> so yeah so i guess we should get on and show the game that we we have yeah okay um so just before we start the game um we are spoiling i think it's five redesigned cards during this game five redesigned cards now they are apparently confirmed, but I'm sure there may be... It could possibly be a tweak before they actually get announced. But as far as I'm, far as I'm aware, these are the final mm. edits. And we've got the um, playtester tournament on Sunday as well, I think, isn't there? There, there is apparently uh, some the play a tournament between people invited to come and play the playtested card in the tournament. Mm. That's 
going to happen so if, thing, if something gets busted there then I suppose it would get changed but of course we don't know if all the redesign will get accepted by the community I'm pretty sure personally I don't see why they wouldn't this, I mean from what I've seen the redesigns look pretty good um, I'm sure there'll be someone who comes up with a, <laughs> a reason why they're not <laughs> yeah well I think it's a nice way to breathe life back into the game without you know, having any new content at all. Yeah. Because it's been, what, nine months before we had our last chapter pack? Because I'm not including the things we do for love. Yeah, that, I mean... <laughs> so it's been, <laughs> it's been quite it. some time. So at least the redesign means we can play with cards and, mm. you know... Yeah. Well, let's um, let's have a little look then at the game. Um, <clears> we will see, um, as I say, five new cards being um, uh, displayed during the game. As the card is played... Um, for the first time, we'll have a screen up just sort of explaining the difference between the old and the new um, version of the cards. So you can see there and see what's been altered. Um, and we'll have like a little mini discussion on, you know, how that might affect the game and, and, and how that is. Um, and yeah, at the beginning of the game, um, we're going to have a little look at the deck lists. So let's have a little look at the deck lists now. Our viewers must, oh. be, must be really confused right now. They've sat here for nearly seven minutes just <laughs> looking at a screen. And not watching a video. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And, and now it's uh, and now it's deck list. So, you know, you can skip a little bit if you don't want to look at the deck list. <laughs> um, yeah, let's have a look at the Greyjoy deck list first. So our first listen, uh, the Greyjoy is a house the red door with Naga's ribs. There is a reason for Naga's ribs. Do you want to say now or should we wait till the spoiler card? Now nah, we can just wait, I guess. We'll hold out. So everyone knows the grand, the drowned god deck, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty standard. There's nothing really groundbreaking in there. Naga's rib, red door to obviously get some consistency with discarding and into the dead pile. Yeah. Um, we're playing this deck because it showcases some spoilers in terms of some redesigned cards. At, and now you know parts of the drowned god deck is on the restricted list, so I'm pretty sure you can guess which cards have been altered slightly. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Yeah, the only surprise I think from this list may be the omission of Valar Morghulis. And that's really because I just wanted to try Champion Challenge. <laughs> Not because I felt like it was a good idea to get rid of it. It's actually a pain in the ass when you play it, so... Is it? Yeah, I thought that might be the case, but I think Champion Challenge and an Easy Truth is probably not why. It should probably be one of them. Mm. So maybe swap one of those for, or, a, for a Valar. Or maybe neither of them. Maybe a Valar and another money plot. Yeah. You I can, mean, when you want to combo out, you need money. <laughs> that is a thing. <clears throat> um, should we look at the Stark deck then? Yeah, let's look at the Stark deck then. Okay. So the Stark deck um, is, well, again, pretty straightforward for a crossing. Yeah, um, it's just lots, a Stark deck, right? Yeah, lots of characters, um, a few events, got a couple of superior acclaim. Um, you can see we do have um, a few restricted cards in there. Um, so again, <laughs> guesses on what's going to be uh, <laughs> going to be spoiled, I guess. Yeah, I mean, those <laughs> J's are really discreet. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is this deck basically um, based on Dennis Luke's deck that he kind of played in Starlek and mm. World Cup. So like kind of, a weenie deck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No massive big to think about. Just weenies. Yeah. Um, plot wise, um, pretty straightforward, I guess. I mean, Winter Festival's nice to get the extra power boost. Um, win or die is like a closer. What is a weenie? Where did that word come from? Weenie. Teeny-weeny. Teeny-weeny? Yeah. Where, like, did, where did Chud come from? Chud Swarm. Oh, that might have been from our Chud Muffins. No, I don't think we were. <laughs> I think, anyway, we digress. <laughs> Plots. Fairly standardish. ish Winter, winter Festival. Gain power, win or die. Yeah, return Palace for one of issue. But... Wither and Cold could be an outlier there. Pretty good with Alisane, Northern Armoury. I'm Great no John, one. I'm no one. <laughs> yeah, so we'll um, we'll have a look at the actual <clears throat> game itself then. Um, so just on our setups. 
So we can see I've got an Alisane, Sansa, um, a King's Road, and the <coughs> Northern Armoury. And Richard, what have you got? Um, I have the Priest of the Throne of God, Rose Road, Iron Mind, and Nagas Ribs. Yeah, and Nagas Ribs was the card that you put out for your House of the Red Door. That's not bad. Four cards to start mm. with Red Door. <clears throat> So my hand there, I think you could see a bear on a scout, um, I think there's a scepter and I'm no one. Um, I think there's an osher in there as well. You've got lots of drowned goddy stuff. Yeah, I would have went through it, but you were still talking, so. <laughs> but there was no Vince there that I could see. No, no Vince. Uh, there was a drowned disciple. Okay. So that was there. We've got a cudgel given to the drowned god. Uh, an economy and some other stuff. Okay. So just on to choosing our first plots then. Um, so what we got? At the gates into Winter Festival. Um, I decided to play Winter Festival um, because my, I don't feel like the deck has got like a really like strong common opener. I think um, Withering Cold might have been acceptable with your non-kneeling Alisane from the military. Yeah, and I guess I don't think And you got an armoury too. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. Um, but I was being a little bit naughty. Naughty? Um, yes, because we'd, we'd had a couple of practice games so that we didn't mess up how to play the new version of the cards. And um, Richard opened up the gates in pretty much every one, so I figured it was a good opportunity <laughs> to make sure I got some power. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because in the game before this, I counted it with exchange of information and you were sad. Maybe. Cheap. Sad? You no. Know, you know, just using knowledge of the other person's deck isn't cheating, right? Well, I think it's the definition of cheating. You do it to me all the time. You build the decks. You know what's in them. Or not, okay. <laughs> would, would you like to continue commentating now? <clears throat> Perhaps we could talk yeah, about the sure, road, road sure. I just marshalled. So, um, Very interesting. Yeah, so you uh, used your at the gates to go and grab a gates of the moon, and then you have marshalled another rose road. So you are set for economy, which must be nice. Mm -hmm. But now you need to uh, make the decisions on what to marshal. So with Drown God, like what's what's the general plan with Drown God decks? Explain yeah. how they work to me. Uh, I guess you need to build a board to start with. Now, of course, playing Red Door Negative Rib means you're a little light on the board. So you play over to you to get some things on the board. Turn two or three, you'd want to see Tile whilst, whilst filling your dead pile. Okay. Um, turn three and four, you want to get Disciples on the board and have your recursion me mechanic going. And then... Sometime, depending on how many disciples you see, um, everything you bring out the dead pile with Tal will give you one, two, or three power okay. every time you do it with each disciple. So you can use Tal to bring them out of the dead pile, which is one of the most common ways. Mm -hmm. uh, Old Wick also bring them out in the challenge phase. Yeah. Um, of course, Drown God Fanatic, any phase. Yeah. And the Drowned God Apostle in the Dominance <clears> phase <throat> when you win Dominance. Okay, yeah. So they're the primary ways you can bring characters from the dead pile. And the Disciple, it has a limit of two per phase. Um, so if you have three on the board and then you marshal something with Tile, say a Chud, you can trigger all three for three power. And then you can play something else out of the dead pile and you trigger all three again. So you could get six power. So we've actually got one of the new cards coming onto the um, board here. So this is the Bear Island Scout. Um, we can see that in the original version, um, after you marshal, you get to search your deck for a House Mormon card. And the alteration here is that um, if you're um, if you play your Bear Island Scout, you search the top ten for a House Mormon card. So it means that you know you're a bit more restricted in what you can go and get. And sometimes well, you will flop. In your uh, in your search, depends how many Mormon cards you've got in your deck. What do you think? I I like it. Yeah, I think it's much better. I think it's because it's not a guaranteed thing anymore. 
um, and it means you can fail. You can't just sit on one of these in your hand, wait for the reset, and then just spam out loads of stuff. Mm. Spell on and scout into Bell and scout into She Bear. <clears throat> it's just not guaranteed anymore. So, for example, if you um, if you draw them early, there's likely to be fewer in the deck to fetch, especially in the top ten. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say it's not so much that there's likely to be fewer in the deck, but the more spread out. So you might be less likely to spot one in the top 10. Also, it gets rid of the Valor de Harris, put your Alisane on the bottom, play a scout, get a straight back. Yeah. Because it's on the bottom. Yeah, so that's, true. that's good. So your top 10 there, you've found another bear one and scout, so you can keep the train going. Mm. Now, that's not always going to be the case. And I think the fact that it makes a bit of uncertainty is a better thing. Yeah. Because ideally, I would have liked to have seen, for example, um, another copy of Alisane, just so I can get a duped. Because I don't know your, I don't know your deck very well, and I thought you had Valorem. <laughs> so I'm thinking I really like a dupe for Alisane, so I can, you know, protect myself against Valorem. You're really going for that dupe? <clears throat> yeah, I was, because I was worried about it. I wanted to spread my board a little bit, but I was worried about your reset, and I couldn't remember what it was. Um, I mean, you've only played this against this deck three times before <laughs> this game, so. <laughs> All right, all right. Um, but you normally beat me in four or five plots, so... No, you won... I think you won two of the practice games, Oh, you? did I? I think we were even at this point oh, on what? games that we'd won. In, th in three games, we were even? No, I think we won four. I, did, I think we played four. Was it three? Yeah, it was three. Did you win two of them then? No, you did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know you definitely won at least one of them. <laughs> yeah, because you conceded when I was on 11 power. Oh, yeah. I think we just looked at your board and was just like, nah. <laughs> I get to Dharma and I win. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so you can see the Bell and Scouts in um, in action there. Um, and as we say, I, I think it's a lot more balanced in that you only get to search the top 10. I think I think most cards that say search your deck should be search the top 10, to be completely honest. Um, but, you know, is what it is. Because that level of uncertainty makes you think about when you play the card can mm. you afford to take the risk more risk management yeah you know yeah it's do you play this little chud that might get you another card or do you play this better character that's definitely going to do something good for you mm. so yeah it's, it, it adds as you say the risk factor so i mean we talked about the redesigned card but in fact redesigned is a little bit of a misnomer because they're not redesigned completely. It's just a case of the power level just been tweaked to a normal two cost card. Mm. Because as it was, Bear and Scout was going into so many decks. Um, yeah, that it was just unpalatable to see all the time. Yeah. At least now it's a choice. Yeah, so I mean, like this particular deck we saw at the beginning um, had, you know, I think it's got all three Bear and Scouts. It's got, I think it's two Alisane got the she bears it's got daisy so you have to kind of commit a bit more to putting more moments in the deck um to try and make sure that the baron scouts are actually worth uh, playing out so you're doing a bit of a tricksy thing then so i'm going in for an intrigue with sansa and osha and what have you done richard so i've saved the acolyte um of the wave with the iron mind earlier from your military claim mm -hmm. and that's because i needed to keep him there and standing for the drone god protolite uh, who take the um, kill a standing Greyjoy character you control to bring uh, the Dragon God Portalite out of shadows. Okay. So I did that. And you've done that um, deliberately after my power challenge so that you can um, get a power on your faction card without having the risk of me taking it during my power challenge. Correct. Um, with the card that I took from your hand, um, is that the Drown Disciple that I claimed with intrigue there it is yes the yeah. drowned disciple so yeah that is discarded of intrigue but setting up at nagazib means it's now in my dead pile ready to be resurrected and is contributing to dominance mm, yes as is the um the priest of the drowned god that's not the priest. there's two priests priest of old wick Priest of Old Wick at the bottom here, and the middle one is the Priest of the Drowned God, and the top one is the Drowned God Prosolite. I was going to say, don't ask me, because I don't play Drowned God at all, and they really confuse me. <laughs> I quite like the Prosis. I'm, I'm sure you do. <laughs> Thanks, hun. 
<laughs> great fun to play with. Coming out of shadows. Uh huh. <laughs> He's such a dick. <laughs> okay. So that round ended 4 2 in your favour, thanks to the Winter Festival that I reminded you of. <clears throat> yeah, we didn't need to mention that bit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure I would have remembered. I'm wearing a Walking Dead shirt because that seemed to be the world now. <laughs> it does feel like uh, this year has been just a giant game of pandemic, really, doesn't it? It does a bit, yeah. Because pandemic, it's really hard to win, just like life. <laughs> so plot-wise, um, I've played Palace of Sorrows into a loan from the Iron Bank. Boom. Busted out my um, my big money plot already. Yeah. You got big characters to play? I have no big characters to play. Oh, I've got another Bear Island Scout in hand. Um, and a She Bear? Yeah, She Bear. But that's limiting your targets in your deck. <clears throat> yes, exactly. <clears throat> so I have just collected 14 gold. And I have no big characters in hand to play. Or in your deck, really, do you? <laughs> no, but you can see there. Oh I'm, my god. I do have two given to the Drown God. You've got like one character in your hand. <laughs> yeah, but I've got two given to the Drown Gods. I could draw loads of cards. Let's draw three. Now if I get a Tarl, maybe that's good. Mm -hmm. A Damp Hair would also be good because he can draw me cards. Or if I just keep drawing Chuds, still good. I can kill them and play them later. Yeah, that's true. A Vint might be nice. <laughs> the king's road might also be nice <laughs> I was going to say it's not quite what you wanted you're using the king's road you must be very confident that you're getting something good damp hair so I, get, I think what I'm going to do is going to play something out uh, put the cudgel on it maybe give it to the drowned god and I can get a card for that character and one from Aaron and okay. move the cudgel to put a power on somebody, probably damp hair. Is that an acolyte or a disciple? It is an acolyte. Cool, so you'll get a power as well when it dies, right? Yeah. So a cudgel on the acolyte. <laughs> Immediately go to the ground, drowned god. Can't yep. Speak. So there's no limit on the um, drowned god event then, you can just... Play it. Okay, I didn't know if it was like limit once per phase or anything mm. like that. That works out right. So Cudgel interrupt, move to damp hair, gives him a power. The Acolyte interrupt, gain the power from my faction. I draw two cards for the event. And now I react with Aaron to draw another card. Have you drawn like six extra cards? I have played two draw events, so yeah. It seems alright. And killed off my characters, killed two of my own characters. <laughs> you like so it's not her. like it's not like I haven't suffered. <laughs> I had to kill two of my friends to get these cards. <laughs> yeah, to draw six cards, I had to kill five cost worth of characters and spend two cards and two further gold. So really, you've used four cards to get six cards? Yes. So you only get an actual net of two. And I spent gold to do it. Hmm. I guess on the plus side, you got some power. Yeah, and having the characters in the dead pile is also advantageous. Mm. And of course, getting through my deck is also advantageous. Five Especially if you're searching for the Vince, eh? <laughs> yeah. What's They're that dude again? A drowned god apostle, so when I win dominance, I can kill him, which is a damp hair trigger, to bring a non unique character of printed cost three or lower from a dead pile into play. Cool. Which hopefully could be that disciple that sat in there, because I'm going to need that in play at some point to get my combo going. Mm. See, we can talk about the mechanics of the Drown Quad, whereas yours is just do challenges, win. Yeah, mine's just spam the board with weenies and then, you know. Do challenges. <laughs> do challenges and hope you don't beat me before I can beat you. I mean, it's worth noting that the cudgel isn't really important in this round. It's essentially blank because Sorrow makes everybody three strength. Yeah. So, and of course, my strength boosting um, priest also irrelevant. Which is part of the reason I played it. I mean, I've got 
you can see there are three characters that have only got one strength. Um, so using the palace um, felt like a good way. Kneeling one of your... Yeah, I knelt this. Um, I, I may or may not use a take back in a moment. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so Shiva Interceptor. I don't have a, a Vince. No. I have a Vincent. And then I'm very aware that my board is enormous. So I don't really want to make my board any bigger. Um, so I decide not to spend the rest of the gold. And um, you kindly say that I can take back. So if you win, it's only because of a take back. <laughs> if you lose, it's because, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, so you were like, that was very silly kneeling. That's true. That, yeah, that's steward. On uh, Sorrow's turn, I was like, oh yeah, I don't even want to marshal anything else. And you were like, take it back. Thanks, honey. So I think there was <laughs> merit to maybe um, just going wide with my board was and killing it off. You know, didn't need to play Given to the Drowned God on the Chud, maybe. But then at the same time, I think it did because I don't have many characters in hand still. I was going to say, I think at the time, especially um, after the first, like before the first... Um, event that you played you didn't have really any characters in hand um so killing one was handy in the very least and like you said it gets through your deck um and you don't mind things in your dead pile because it's drowned god and and they can come back out and they can come back out if you can find an old wick that would be great i mean it's a unique one that you worry about being in the dead pile mm. because they're harder to resurrect because tile can marshal any of the non-unique one yeah so they can come out any time but if you've got a unique one in there uh, let's say Tile get taken for injury claim and you trick a rib to put him in the dead pile. You need him to be on the top for Ult to get him out with Old Wick. Oh, is it the top card? Yeah, it's the top card. Oh. You don't choose. It's the top card. Top drawn God card. Doesn't and uh, there's no other, work, no other way really to get the unique out because you know, Vint comes out on his own. Tile Marshall's non-unique. And the Apostle uses non-uniques. Mm. So the uniques you have to be careful with. Luckily there aren't too many <coughs> in there though, right? No, not really. Um, I, if I remember correctly, mess up a little bit this round. So you did an intrigue with uh, Dampy, um, which I decided to defend. Yeah, that's sad. I was going for the draw, really. I just wanted another card because... Maybe, but I wanted to use my I Am No One. So I Am No One is another card that has been altered. Um, so originally it was choose a character printed cost three or, um, or lower. And basically, they get insight and stealth and don't kneel. But if we have a look at the new version, um, it can be Arya Stark or a unique character you control. So you can't just do it on the random chuds anymore. Um, and they gain insight but and they don't kneel, but they no longer get stealth. Because you can use it on Arya, this does mean that other cost Arya, um, like the bigger ones, it technically works on her too, which is quite nice and thematic, I think. Yeah, so so we're losing the ability to play it on non-unique characters. We're losing stealth. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Yeah, we're losing stealth, losing unique character. Non-unique. Non, sorry, yeah. Um, non but we gain the ability to play it on all eyes. Now, that's not like a massive thing, in my opinion, because... I mean, how often do you see the bigger Aryas actually being used? I think that makes the the five cost Arya with the stealth and the tricon much better. Yeah, I think she'll be played more. Yeah, well, I would play I am no one with that one because you've now got a tricon with stealth inside, doesn't know to attack, mm. and can not only draw cards for winning challenges, but if you kill someone in the military challenge you, and they've got a token on them, you can draw even more. So yeah. I like that it promotes other Aryas. In, in play? Yeah, that's true, actually. Um, I mean, the the normal three-cost Arya that you see most commonly um, is, is quite nice because she will still have the stealth and it feels like that works because she is no one that's like, yeah. you know, it's sort of quite thematic, I think, with that. I do like that chain to make it Arya because Arya is no one. Yeah, yeah, that's where it's from, isn't and it, really? And those non-unique chuds are also no one, but I guess it's not... They're not important no ones. <laughs> 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 They're the hierarchy of no one. <laughs> yeah. I do think it does tone the power level down because it's not giving out stealth now. Mm. And that makes it harder to win challenges. So we've all seen the crossing game where the crossing player has 
a few character, two or three characters, the opponent has two or three characters, and then they play I am no one, and suddenly they've got a Bicon who's not going to kneel to attack, who's got stealth and insight. So it can yeah. win the crossing challenges, draw more cards, and not even kneel. So um, it's actually a little bit of an example in uh, this game. So I played it on Sansa, um, kind of forgetting, even though it's spoiling the card, kind of forgetting that she's not going to get stealth. Because um, <laughs> I'm a dork. Uh, so my plan was to, uh, you know, use the Northern Armory to stun one of the other intrigue icons and guarantee I win the intrigue challenge to get myself the insight. Um, and then, you know, use her again for the power. Um, forgetting that I couldn't stealth past one of the um, characters to stop you. And yeah, that was a little bit silly on my part. But shows that, you know, not having the stealth does actually affect things. You can't just sort of go in willy-nilly and be like, yay, I get free stealth non-kneeling for yeah. two, three challenges. I do think one cost for stealth, non-kneeling, insight, at the cost of losing your faction affiliation is, you know, the ability to participate in two challenges, draw two cards, and mm. win two challenges as well, as well as being stood for something on defense, is probably a bit strong. Well, that's why the stealth has gone, right? Yeah. So I think it has been weakened, which I think is a good change. Oh, got another um, of the cards here. So Return to the Fields. So Return to the Fields is another card that has been um, edited. Now, originally, um, the plot was that you may sacrifice up to three characters. For each character sacrificed, you draw a card and gain a gold. Um, basically, the new version has lost the gold, so you just get the cards for um, the characters that are sacrificed. The other little note as well is that you now do have a plot deck <coughs> limit of one written on the card, um, so you cannot include more than one copy of this in your deck. Obviously, a lot of Stark decks originally were including two. Um, you know, for the when the when you think the reset's going to happen. And then when your opponent's bluffed you and they've not actually reset you, you can then play it again uh, when the reset's actually happening. So now with this plot deck limit one, makes you have to think a bit harder about when you actually play this plot. Yeah, you actually have to time it correctly. And that, mm. that's important because um, when you have played it twice, if you missed, it was fine. But then when you eventually hit, uh, not only did you save your character from the reset and draw more cards, but you also got loads of gold for it as well. So yeah. you could play all your new cards out. This way, you kind of have to set up your economy bay. You could predict the reset perhaps and draw more cards, but you still need the economy on your backboard to actually play it out. Mm. So it's no longer just a play two or, you know, just counter the reset and f flood onto the board. Yeah, you actually have to sort of think about it. So either blow my low too early, <laughs> Doesn't sound like you. Uh, I With my big board, I was expecting a reset. Um, obviously, you didn't play one. You played an easy truce, which is a really, really annoying plot. Like, I didn't realise how annoying this plot was. It's really good against crossing. That yeah. wants to do three challenges. And when Drown God is a deck that primarily wants to put power on its characters... Well, good. if you there's also the acolyte of the wave which want to put power on the faction card, but that can happen if they die to military claim. So. Mm. so yeah, I decided to sacrifice three characters. Um, so I get three new cards. You've got loads of options. Yeah, yeah, I've I've got a lot of options in hand. I'm still worried about your reset. I I just I couldn't for the life of me remember what the reset was because we played the other games a few days ago, didn't we? Valar <laughs> and Wildfire normally. Mm, well, that's what I was thinking. It's like, oh, it's Drowned God. It's Greyjoy. They're probably going to be running a <laughs> Valar. Especially in this deck where Iron Mind isn't restricted. Mm. Because the objective is, with the redesigned card, that it would eliminate the restricted list. Yes. And Iron Mind is also a card up for change, but I do believe that is not finalised, so we just played it as normal. Yeah. Yeah. What you got there, Tal? Yep. I'll also point out that the cards we've seen so far, mm -hmm. redesigned is generous. They've basically just been tweaked to the existing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Deck. I mean, I say redesigned, but like you say, it's literally just the odd word here or there to um, make the cards less strong, basically, so that they're a bit more fitting for the um, current card pool. Of course, there have been a couple of cards that have been redesigned, but they'll get announced when they get announced. Yeah. 
And I saw, um, uh, was it like yesterday, like the cat got spoiled on Facebook? Which I, I quite like that there's uh, more random little cat characters. <laughs> well, they do exist in the law, so why not? Yeah? What is the law behind this cat? Like, why does he not die? He's just really, really fucking old. <laughs> just a really old cat in the books. Yeah, I think the quote on the card was um, something like, you know, tough and he basically the king of the castle. Oh, uh, okay. Surprised he didn't have the king trade. <laughs> What's the, um, because Sir Pounce is the card, isn't it? Yeah. Is he? He's not king trait though, is he? He's a cat and a knight. Oh, yeah, that was it. <laughs> I do like that you can just have like this little collection of cats. I mean, cats are obviously evil, just to clarify. Um, but, you know, it amuses Everyone me. Everyone knows cats are evil. Yeah, but it amuses me that you can have like cat playing cards now in, in Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, what's actually going on though? I probably should be more focused on the game, right? Yeah, so I played out loads of characters. I played out Tal and resurrected two mm. of my Acolytes of the Waves. Oh, they're the ones that when they die, they get power for the faction, right? Yeah, so my plan is to wildfire next turn, keeping Aaron, Tal, and one of the others. Mm -hmm. Probably hoping to win Dom, kill the Acolyte, uh, sorry, the Apostle, bring in the Drowned God Disciple, Drowned Disciple, gain a power, and then keep Tal, Damp Hair, and the Disciple for the wildfire. Oh, okay. So that way, I'll get a card from the Apostle dying, and when the, when the wildfire hits, I'll get two power from the Acolytes dying, and I'll draw from Aaron again. Mm. And then I can marshal whatever I like with Tal. That's my plan. Sounds like you've got it all planned out. That's my plan at this point in the game. And that is why I've not marshaled that many characters, and instead... Marshall to King's Road ready for my, uh, you know, reflood after your reset. Mm -hmm. I, I I was thinking ahead. I can do that too occasionally. Past challenges. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're both past challenges. <laughs> That's fine for me. It means I can do things. Well, no, you're first player. You pass challenges. Mm, it means and I can then... do things in Dom now. Oh. Yeah, I mean, like... I didn't have much um, motivation to do challenges against you because I'd just be giving you power. Um, and if I do even like a military, for example, you're just going to get power from me for doing the challenge and then extra power from killing things. And yeah, like... So I've killed the Apostle. I'm reacting to that cost by yeah. drawing with Aaron and then completing the effect. Drowned Disciple. Ooh, talk us through. Okay, so it was after a character enters play from your dead pile, choose a drowned god character and have it gain one power, limit twice per phase, has now changed to max twice per phase. So the difference being is if you have all three on the board and yeah. you tile out two characters from the dead pile, you were able to trigger each of them twice in the marshalling phase to gain six power on one character. Uh, now, instead of a limit which is on the card, you now have a max which is on the player. So the player can only trigger that effect twice per phase. So even if I have three on the board and I marshal something from my dead pile, mm. I can only gain two power. Okay, and that's because of the limit changing to max. Correct. Wow, one more difference actually makes quite a lot of difference. Yeah, because I have won a few games um, playing the Drowned God. When you get the dream, you have three disciples on the board, and then you've got Old Wick, so you bring something out in challenges for three power, and then you vince something, and you get another three power, so that's six power in one hit. Mm. That speed has now been limited. Okay, so whereas before you could just get six power on one go potentially, now maximum you would be able to get is two. Per phase, yes. Per phase, yeah. So it's still, you know, you can still go normally if you have one disciple. You can still go at a reasonable pace. Um, but it just stops the fact that when you have three disciples and you suddenly get six power, or when you have two disciples and you get four power, that's stopped now. You can only get two maximum. Okay. Well, it certainly seems a lot fairer to me. Good for you. <laughs> 
It's certainly a lot fairer when I've only seen one of them. Yeah. I, it makes no difference. Yeah. Because yeah. I can't accelerate. Accelerate. But yeah, we we have seen those games where someone gets a load, then they just get a recursion like Vince and Tar early, and then they just go to town. I was going to say, you've still not seen any Vince, have you? No. <laughs> well, if you have, you've not played any. <clears throat> um, God, then. So I've decided to reset you. <laughs> and I've forgotten my plan, <laughs> which would have been amazing had I remembered my plan. Yeah. Because I would have tied initiative, but I have less power. Would you have tied initiative? I've got two king's roads. Yeah. Your initiative is five plus two. <clears throat> ah, okay. So wildfire seven. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. So yeah, and at this point I'm thinking, oh shit, I'm gonna wildfire. <laughs> you're an absolute dork. Yeah, I did think like either you're gonna reset, in which case at least I can save some of my characters. Or if you don't reset, you've actually got a couple of bigs on the board. Well, bigish on the board now. So maybe I can reset you and make your game more annoying. Because <laughs> I get to keep four cards out of this. Nice. I get to keep Tal, my power gaining me- mechanism, and an, an acolyte. Mm. Yeah, the only sad thing for me was that I lost a scepter who was giving Sansa um, renown and the extra strength. You've still got two stands available and you're getting a shared load of economy. Yeah, so... Well, I don't have a shared load of economy, but I can stop your one of your challenges. Mm. And I've got another Iron No One. Still oh. got that She-Bear and the Bear Iron Scout. Black Gate, you could really spam out if you wanted. I know! You know what? Um, I, I, I had the Black Gate from, like, round one. Um... But I've just like avoided using it because I'm just waiting for you to reset me. And every time I think you're going to reset me, you don't reset me. (laughs) What do you think about the school of thought which says, play out cards and make your opponent reset you? I did. I had like a board of eight at one point and I thought you were going to reset me. So I returned to the field. I just thought you were going to return to the field. (sighs) Well, obviously you thought right. Popped a card in shadows and wonder what that could be. Yep, also have old wick. Ooh, that seems good. That's gonna well, means I can be a bit more proactive with my power challenges to get mm. triggers. Yeah, because um I think in this game so far you've done like one challenge. <laughs> yeah, I think it's wise to play defensively until you've got pieces. Hmm. And yeah, we've not seen a lot of work from Naga's ribs. Really? Um, But here we go. We have Tal marshalling the uh, Priest of Old Wick using the Drowned Disciple to gain a power on Tal. Seems good. Yeah, they're also pretty good. I mean, they're full strength and they count for dominance even when they're kneeling. Yeah, I mean, I guess, um, you know, if you've got the Naga's Ribs thing going on um, to help boost your dominance... And you've got this priest of old wick. You've got plenty of things to sort of help you win Dom sort of passively without having to be leaving character standing, which is nice. Yeah. Of course, I don't have an apostle. No. So my incentive to winning Dom is not particularly high. Okay, so we have a Bear Island Scout. So you're going to search the top 10 cards for your deck for a half moment card. Yep, this is the third of my scouts. I'm still hoping to try and find an Alessane so I can dupe it. <laughs> um, but I think, if I remember correctly, this one was a flop. Wow, it was a flop. Yeah, so no more months for me. I think that's good. I think that's a good way to balance the card. Mm. We've shown that on three triggers, two were successful in the early game, but as you get to the later game... Um, it was unsuccessful. Yeah, I'd obviously sort of gone and fetched a few and naturally found some, um, which meant, you know, later in the game, although the deck isn't as big, so there's less cards to, uh, you know, disperse the uh, Mormon characters through. Unfortunately, 
because I found a few of them already. I did not have any in the top ten. Well, I guess if you've got three Bear Honor to get three She Bears, a Daisy, and two Alisanes, that's nine Mormont cards you have in your deck. Mm. And you've seen, what, two She Bears, three Bear Island Scout, and Alisanes. There's only three that you could possibly get in that big stack of cards. Yeah, I guess so. So, yeah, seeing more of them early makes the trigger less effective. Mm. But I do like that you still get the um, deck shuffle. Um, it means that after you've LRD, you can get those cards back, sort of, you know, through the deck. It also increases, I think, um, Willa. Yeah. Because then you can put more Mormont card back into your deck. Yeah, I mean, this deck does run well. I think she's. I think she might be a two of. Um, so, yeah, she she is quite handy in this kind of deck. We're doing a power challenge here. Yeah, triggered our wick to bring in the Apostle. Uh, triggered the Drowned Disciple to put a power on Tal. Mm-hmm. So I win the challenge by five. So the Apostle comes back to hand. So in my head here, I decide to let it go unopposed because I figure it's still miles behind me. Um, I don't mind you getting an unopposed. It means I've got character standing. I keep the Acolyte to the Wave standing because I want to bring out a card from Shadows. Ah, okay. Because my plot is Champion Challenge, but if you do a military, you will Great John Intimidate Tarl, so I will not mm. be able to trigger the plot. Ah, I see. Unless I have another character, which is my highest strength. Yeah. So I'm going for military with Alisane and um, Grey John. So my idea is to get some of your cards knelt. Now, um, I'd like to point out, <laughs> um, as, as most of the loyal viewers know, um, and, you know, it's near the end of the video, so I can say it, so anyone who's like a, you know, filthy casual have gone by now anyway. Uh, I am obviously an absolute dork. Um, well, that goes without saying. <laughs> so, um, basically, where where we sit to play, um, the light from behind Richard... Oh, here we go. Shut up. The light from behind Richard means that, for me, there's a lot of glare on his plot and on the bottom left of his... Basically, the left-hand side of his mat is... There's so much glare. I can't actually genuinely see what the card is. I can't is. see because glare. Oh, bog off. And so, because, I think what she's trying just, to say... Let me just explain. Can you explain it a bit quicker then? <laughs> I'm trying. Um, so I can't actually see what your plot does. And I keep forgetting what it does because I don't normally see it. So in my head, it was you stand and remove a character. Not that you just cancel the challenge from happening altogether. Stand and remove a character? That's so poor. Well, whatever. Also, let's point out, I did read the plot out to you when we flipped them. I, I, you told me to hurry up, so I was just going to skip that bit. <laughs> 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 so when I do um, I'm no one on Sansa here um, I do the intrigue first um, so that I could you know do that but what I should have done is I should have restood um, Great John done the power and then I could have um, potentially intimidated and even if your champions challenged it I'd still be able to get my crossing through yeah um, whereas yeah. now well, if I don't have... defend the power challenge um he gets intimidated and I can't champion challenge the green. Um, if I cancel the, the power challenge... Yeah, so basically I, sh I should fine. have done the power challenge second um, using Great John, like using a Northern Armoury to stand Great John and, and um, kneeling someone out. Um, but because I'm a dork, I didn't because I misremembered what champion challenge was. <laughs> See, so, yeah, so now I can't win the power challenge because... Uh, Richard will just cancel it entirely. So I just lost out on a crossing trigger, basically. Yeah, that's cool. But again, cool. it means that, like, you know, showing Sansa and I'm no one and not actually that great. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> it's you're going to get right, more but... cards and you've got loads of econ still for the maybe reset. <laughs> you need to reset. You've got three cards as well now, which makes sense to reset. What I need now is a big economy plot, which means I shouldn't have champion challenge in my deck. That should be an economy plot. I should have wildfired this round, played my economy plot next round, marshaled loads of stuff in my dead pile, got some triggers, won a power challenge with a wick. We've caught up a bit this turn though. Like it was like 9-3 before and now it's 11-7. 
discarding an acolyte to reserve Naga's rib to bin. <laughs> So I'm, I think I'm sort of debating here whether I should go for a close. But then I think you're probably going to reset me. So I was a little bit unsure about what plot to play here. Although I've been thinking you're going to reset for me for like the last three or four rounds. So <laughs> Yeah, I think it's <laughs> a good time to wildfire. Mm. Yeah, especially when you've only got the three. So yeah, you've gone for wildfire. I've gone for withering cold. Um, you win initiative. Yeah. I figure if I can go first, I've got Great John to intimidate. Um, I've got Alice Ain non kneeling. Um, and then I have to keep Sans. Um, and then having Sansa as well. Um, Sansa! <laughs> like for the for the green. Um, and then the small John for renown. But then you've wildfired, so I'm going to lose one of those. And I've still got two Northern Armory standing, which is nice. Do, 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 do. You've got a Vince! That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Finally cancelled all those character abilities that have been plaguing me. <laughs> but I think it's the recursion mechanism which is very important. Mm. It's nice to have an extra trigger and be able to oppose a military challenge. <laughs> so that basically costs you power every round. Yeah. And give me a power every round. So a, a pretty nice swing. Quite important. Yeah, because the only military icons in your deck are literally the three Vince, right? Yeah. So the best way to get uh, a Vince is really to play the um, Prophet, the Drowned Prophet, the two cost. However, I haven't drawn any of those, so I haven't been able to kill them, look in the top five, put a Vince in the mm. dead part, and then be able to recur. Um, just a quick note here. So I've played out a She-Bear. Um, and asked if you wanted to cancel it. Um, you said that you get to see your, that I have a valid target first, so yep. I'm showing that I will be playing out Arya. Um, I think you decide that you're not going to cancel the she -Bear trigger. Yeah, I think you've got enough money to just play out Arya, and you only have, what, four or five cards in hand, so you're probably mm. going to play out whatever you want anyway. Yeah. So instead... Um, I try and trigger Arya, and that's when the Vince gets played. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so Vince, the Drown God Fanatic, was kill a character to put a Drown God Fanatic into play from your dead pile, max one per round. Um, that is still similar, but not the same. And the interrupt was when the effect of an opponent triggered character ability would initiate, place Drown God Fanatic into your dead pile from your hand to counter those effects. So the new card is now you have to kill a, a Greyjoy character you own and control. So that gets rid of the interaction with Balon, um, King of the Isle of Balon, who can take your opponent characters from the, their discard pile, put it into play under your control, and then you would trigger the Drowned God Fanatic to kill them. Mm -hmm. uh, that interaction is now gone with the change to that action. And the interrupt was also changed, so rather than just putting the Drowned God Fanatic into your dead pile... Um, you now have to discard the card. So it kind of forces you to play the Naga rib, Naga's Ribs, basically, doesn't it? That is the reason I chose the Red Door Naga's Rib, because that change really pigeonholed Vince into the Drown God deck, which is where he shines. Mm. Um, so to use him as you want to in the Drown God deck, you have to have Naga's Rib. So you can take the risk with the normal deck and just play three of, or you could Red Door it, um, like I have. So, yep. So I've cancelled the Arya dupe by discarding Vint and then triggered Naga's ribs to put Vint into my dead pile. Yeah. And now you've got a bit of naturally um, jumping in and out Drown Gods for your turn. Yeah, and I can block your military unopposed if yeah, I want to. Yeah, just a little bit annoying. I was quite enjoying getting those unopposed military challenges. <laughs> now I'm going to have to be a bit more uh, careful with them. So how do you feel about the change to the Drown God fanatic? Yeah, um, so I think that the fact that it has to be a greater character you own in control is really good because when you're up against, um, as you say, like the Balon decks and, you know, you just put the Vince in the deck because why wouldn't you want to be able to just kill off the fat cat that you've just stolen for the round of Balon? You know, now you can't just do that. It also means that if you're doing a banner deck, 
um, for example, the um, Greyjoy and um, Martell combination that is quite common. Um, you can't just be using um, the Drangor fanatic against you know your your banner cards. It has to be your Greyjoy yeah. cards. So you can't just kill off your bastard daughter to get rid yeah. of your opponent card. You can't kill off the Desert Raider. It has to be a Greyjoy character you own and control. Mm. Which I think makes it a bit fairer, and like you say, it also makes it more of a drowned god deck card rather than a this is just awesome let's put it in everything card and i actually think the design idea of discarding the card um which forces you to play it with nagger's ribs if you want the recursion ability of vince i think it's really clever design yeah because it really ties it into the drowned god deck yeah because nagger's ribs obviously is um something that works really well with the, the whole Drown God theme. Um, so it is really nice just to sort of encourage that combination. It is. You're doing some naughty things. Yeah, just doing some Drown God things. Yeah. I will make one more point with Vince. Okay, yeah. And that is, you can just play him in a good stuff deck if you want to. Yeah. He's overcosted for two icons and two strength for, at three, but if you have him in your hand, which Greyjoy aren't normally the best at protecting, but if you do have them in hand, you can ca- cancel a character ability uh, for free by discarding it. Yeah. Um, which makes it a cheaper treachery, but a more limited treachery, I guess, in that set of circumstances. Yeah. Um, and I believe Vince had something to say. Yeah, Vince is happy with the redesign. Um, he did ask me to say something, though, and I quote... I think the issue lies with the general design of the Greyjoy house after the creation of the card, though. So he, Vint believes that the card isn't the problem. The design of the Greyjoy cards as a whole mm. is the problem with Vince. So maybe at the time that Vince was actually made, it wasn't as big an issue, is what he feels? or I think Vint was generally distraught when he realised that Vince cancelled Varys. <laughs> So you've just done some Greyjoy stuff here, um, and now suddenly you're winning, considering you was on seven earlier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I initiated a military challenge. You've defended it with Vince, so nothing like was even killed by me. You just did all the stuff yourself. Well, that's bad because I kind of wanted Vince to die. Ah, uh, yeah. Be better to get in the dead part. No good on the board. But um, so that was a military. So I've got the intrigue and the power left to go. And I think you need to be careful here. So there's a possibility I can get two power next marshalling phase. Yeah. You know, by by marshalling two characters. Um, Oh, right, yeah, from the dead pile. From the dead pile. So if I win Dom this round and not lose the power challenge, that's 15. Um, Depends what... You do, I suppose. Yeah, well, I'm just doing a cheeky little intrigue for one because Sansa's strength has been reduced because of the characters in the dead pile. You sacrificed the old gate? I did, yeah. I sacrificed the old gate earlier. What were you looking for? Um, I was looking for a superior claim, Richard. Do you even have it? I didn't. But I do now. That's a shit card for shit heels. <laughs> you gave me the deck. Well, I blame Dennis Luke, based on his deck. <laughs> so I'm just double checking my math um, that you can't do anything mean to stop me from winning now. What is this? This is a big power challenge, stealthing your overpowered dude. You know what? I can tell by the way you knelt the cards, or messy and erratic like that, I know you've got a superior <laughs> claim because you can't even be bothered. You just think you've won. Yeah, I have. I've got a brand if you had a hands judgment. Although if you had another Vince, that would be really sad. Superior claim! Nice. I can see. I win. Woohoo! <laughs> well played, GG. It was close at the end, though. That's cool. Yeah, it was all right. We, I think we showed those tweaked cards in a decent light. Yeah. I think we got them all well enough, didn't we? Yeah. So, so um... Sorry, go on. <laughs> no, you, you go on. I was, I was just going to say, um, you know, we hope that the uh, deck has been, the well, the, the video even, has been interesting for you all, um, and that you are liking the new cards. If you've got any comments, you know, be 
cool to see what you have to say. And um, yeah, thanks to the design team for putting so much time and effort into actually, you know, sorting these all out for us and letting us um, spoil them for you. Yeah, I guess that's what I wanted to say. Excellent. Um, um, do the do the spiel. The, the spiel. Yeah, right, the, okay. the sing. So, thanks for watching the video. If you'd like <laughs> to support the channel, you can do so by going to patreon.com forward slash the white walkers. And um, yeah, we'll try and sort out some more videos for you soon. Goodbye, human beings. Bye, everyone. <laughs>